Hi folks, um, wanted to do a short video just to kind of put it out there how you could fix a uh, poker table top. I bought this table on Amazon, I think for about 700 bucks about a year ago. She came from China um, via freight shipper. When it got here, was pretty happy with it. Setup was, was fairly easy, instructions weren't great, but um, the felt was pretty loose. So played on it a couple times, was really unhappy with it. Um, contacted the seller after about a month of haggling back and forth. Um, their solution was to send me another top, which they did. And uh, it came and exact same problem that the first one had. The felt was really loose. Don't know if you can see that very well on the video, but um, when you're playing, here I'll grab some cards to throw on there. When you're playing, it gets to be really annoying. Because the felt is so loose. Just not very good quality. So, they sent me another just top that came along uh, by itself. Didn't come with the pedestals or the foot rail or any of that. And uh, last year I decided to tear that one apart and um, just give it a go since I had two of them and was able to um, fix it. Kind of a pain, but much better now. Felt is really tight and uh, good to play on. So I thought I'd do a little video because now I'm gonna fix this one. Um, and this one I've just got sitting on top of a regular folding table. Works good as a second table. If we have a bigger bigger tournament going, need more than one table. So I'll do a short video on just what I'm doing to pull this whole thing apart. It's kind of tedious, but it's worth it to fix the thing and have it be a worthwhile table to play on. So the first thing we're gonna start with is gotta pull off this trim piece. I already pulled out a couple of the little brad nails that hold it in there. You can see it's it's loose now, but that's the first step in pulling this whole thing off. Unfortunately, we got to pull the rail, all of it off to get down to the felt where we can finally take all those staples out and stretch that out to where it's nice and tight. So all I'm doing here is using a little little pry tool just being real careful not to damage any of the rail material, which is like a plastic, fake leather type stuff. But it is, you know, susceptible to scratches or tears. So just kind of taking my time, doing a couple nails at a time. I throw it all in a baggie so I can reuse it all. We're gonna, I'm gonna reuse everything on here except for staples. Uh, when the staples come out, obviously they're gonna be in pretty bad shape. So I'll just um, restaple those with new staples. But one thing I do want to show you is right here where this piece starts. I take a, a sharpie and make a little mark. I don't know if you can see it there just as a guide so that I know where these kind of where these holes match up with the material um, so when I go to put it back together it'll make it a little bit easier so all I'm gonna do is work my ray around the table pulling this piece off and then uh, saving all the brad nails and then I'll set that piece aside and I'll move on to the next piece which is just a little fur or uh, material strip underneath um, I'll show you and kind of explain that. Alright, so the aluminum trim piece is off of the entire table. I'll show you what I do. Uh, just take this thing it's it's real it's just thin aluminum I think is the material but I put it over here on top of my good table um, you just don't want it to get kinked up or folded or anything else there was 
looks like they ran out of um, length so they added like a foot to fill the whole thing in but that is all off now all my little brads are in a baggie zipped up so I don't lose them then I'll just reuse those uh, when I put this piece back on so over here what I'm gonna do now clean off top of the table I'm gonna flip this thing over uh, on top of the table that it's sitting on I'm gonna put a an old comforter or something under there just to kind of protect it as best I can um, not real high quality table kind of get what you pay for but I'm still gonna try and keep it as nice as possible because it, it'll be a decent table to still play on uh, if this fix goes well so I'll get that flipped over and then I'll show you the next step okay so here it is uh, got a old comforter on the table just to protect the top flipped it over gonna do most of the work now um, upside down but this little piece of trim material has to be taken off it's all staples so those are just gonna get pried out that strip will come up and then we can start working on taking um, the rail off after that which gets to be a little bit tricky but hopefully it'll go um, like the last one did and turn out okay so that's the next step show you uh, what we do after that so again this is just me um, you know probably taking it too serious but I found the seam of this and I just like to mark um, exactly where that's at it's kind of doubled up right there so just in case um, I'm gonna mark that and then I'm gonna do my best to just put it back in the exact same spot um, when I put it back on but for this piece probably not a big deal but just with the way it's curved and the shape of it it just might be easier to go back on the same way that it was when I take it off okay the this little trim piece is off now um, as you can see a couple piles of staples those are the staples that we pulled out I got my son helping me pull staples as I pry them so so far total to get that aluminum trim piece off and then that little piece of uh, material it's probably about an hour and a half so it's not a quick job like I said kind of get what you pay for um, this tables nice table but constructed quickly and cheaply um, so to fix it tons of staples so this is going to be the next step got to remove all of these staples the entire way around the table to peel back the rail and then gonna to have to flip the table back over and then take off the rail and the padding and there's going to be more staples to take off underneath the rail for the uh, rail material that covers it so show you that in a minute okay one thing i'm going to do here before i start pulling these staples and again this is me um, just kind of being detailed but it does help this rail has seams at the end and then i think at a couple of different spots on each longer side of the table so just to make sure that this is all kind of matched up when I put it back on here and that it fits fairly nice I'm just taking my sharpie and uh, going around and kind of making a couple of marks at each one of those seams that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to match all this up when I'm uh, putting it all back together the first one that I did that I already fixed um, turned out pretty well I used the same method but it is a little bit difficult to get everything to match up perfectly um, 
when you're putting it back on and stretching it out and dealing with the staples. So this method I found seems to help. Um, just, a, just a little tip. All right, all the staples are out of the bottom of the rail. They actually came out pretty easy with that rail material. Made it a little easier to get the, the flathead screwdriver under there, but got a couple piles of staples. So I was guessing about 100 staples. So now I'm gonna get this cleared off, turn it over, and then start working from the top side. Okay. Got it flipped back over. Um, all the staples are out from the bottom side of the rail. Just gotta pop out all these cup holders, which is super easy. All they do is sit in there. So I'm gonna go around and get that done. And then I will peel this material back and show you what the underside looks like. And then uh, start working on getting, um, it's like a small particle board rail that they put on there with some padding on it. I'm pretty sure it's glued on, but I'll get under there and uh, let you guys know what I find, show you how to get that off. All right, this is what it looks like with the rail material peeled back. Now that material is still underneath this small particle board that they use for the to raise the rail up create the rail um, and it's stapled on that other side so the next step is going to be to peel off this rail which is in sections um, as you can see the little seams there the two end pieces are i think one curved piece or maybe two each if I remember from the previous table, but what I don't remember, it's been about a year since I did the other one, is exactly how I got these off. I think I just have to start with prying one. Um, I can't remember if they were just glued or if there's some sort of screws. If they are screws, they're, they're pretty small um, and they just popped right out when I pried them. So... I'll get a piece of that off and then uh, show you um, once I get going on the rest of it what that step looks like. So uh, as I'm getting into this, I remember now that um, this rail layer is glued on, but it's also got just some real fine finish nails in there. So basically, I just got to pry this part off. Those nails are going to come out and then... Uh, I remember on the previous one, once I got those nails out, I'm going to have to snip them off to get rid of them because um, they're nailed through from the top side. And I'm trying not to take any of this padding off as much as I as I can help because um, it's, it's glued on to this part. So as much as I can take these off in one you know piece or one chunk um, and not have to redo it all, I'm going to try and do that. And then um, on the old table, once I put those back on, um, I just put some, some screws through from the bottom uh, to tighten that back down. So I'll end up doing the same thing here. So I'll show you what this looks like as I'm prying this off. Just got to be real careful not to put um, too much pressure on any part of it because this is real weak. Just particle board um, could break pretty easy if it does break. Not the end of the world. I can either cut a piece to replace it or um, put it back in there together enough where once everything goes back on, you won't even notice it. So I'm going to use my pry tools and a hammer um, and just try and gently get this piece off.
I ended up having to grab a little more substantial pry bar here. Some of these nails are kind of clustered together. So same thing, I'm gonna just try to work them out little by little without breaking any of this particle. So there we go. Took a little bit of work, but that's what that looks like. Um, you can see again, kind of quickly and cheaply made. But what I'm going to do is come back and cut these off with some side cutters. Just get rid of them all together. I'll pull these out. Um, then I'll end up, you know, sweeping up all this dust and particle mess. But. Um, that's going to be the process to get the rest of that rail off all the way around. Now that these ends are exposed, it'll be a little bit easier to be able to pry from the ends also. But then you can see what we're dealing with here. After that rail comes off, I have to pull out these staples to get the rest of the, the rail cover off. And once that's done, this is the actual speed felt. Then we're down to that. So then all these staples are going to have to be pulled out. I'll leave them um, most likely on one end. And then I'll be able to just stretch it and staple it back down. So still a ways to go. I'll be working on this. I'll uh, show you some progress as I go. The other thing, I guess, before I shut this off, these pieces are going to be marked. Um, as I take them, I'm going to take my Sharpie and uh, as I'm pulling these things off, I'm going to mark these with a letter so that I'll know exactly which piece goes back where. Those letters are never going to be seen. It's all going to be covered up by uh, material. You won't see them when the product is finished. Okay, so as I'm working on this, this padding has some seams in it, but the seams don't necessarily match up with the seams of the um, rail. So just to make things easier, I'm going to make a cut here of the padding so that it will uh, just come up easier when I put all this back down, put the cover back over it, you'll never know that that's cut. Um, so it's not a big deal at all, but just to make things easier um, we'll Make a cut right there close to the seam of the particle board That ripped a little bit, but again, it's not gonna matter all this just kind of gets squished down and uh, You really don't know it Once you put your rail back over so obviously I'll show you all that when the product is finished But same thing happened with the previous one that I fixed um, this was the, the best way just to make this easy to come off. If I try to pull all of this off of the rail, it's just going to get all tore up because it's glued on. So this works. So the rail is off of this thing now. Um, got it cleaned up. Uh, came off fairly easy a um, couple of the pieces on these corners where it's uh, there's a cup holder there's not much material those cracked a little bit but again it's uh, it's particle board and because I left the um, foam padding on there it keeps everything in place so you can see like this one is the worst one it cracked all the way through 
Um, if that foam padding wasn't on there, that would come right apart. But because it is, it's holding it in place. Not a big deal. That thing's going to go right back on. You'll never know that that's cracked. Um, if this ever had to be done again in the future, uh, to be fixed again, um, probably end up having to cut a new piece for that one. But for now, and for the sake of not having to buy any more materials or do any cuts, this is going to work just fine. Um, so here, the next step is going to be to pull off uh, this rail. Got to pull all these staples out. This rail padding, I should say. Um, get all those staples out all the way around and then that thing will come up and then I'm ready to start pulling staples on the speed felt so that I can stretch it out and uh, fix the actual problem. Um, so just one thing I want to show you here. I did take a, a just a speed square and I made some marks on the table itself and then on the rail cover um, so that when I again when I put this thing back on I want to get it as close as possible to where it was because all these cuts for the cup holders all that's got to match up otherwise it's gonna look really bad but um, use the square so that I could come over here and mark it on the rail cover and then mark it on the table I can't mark it on the felt because the felt's actually going to move once I pull all the staples and stretch it out. So that won't be a good reference point for me. So just something to think about if you're doing this. Um, and then again, I marked all my rail pieces just with a letter so that um, all the way around the table so that when I put them back on, I know exactly which piece went where. Just makes it easier to tidy things up. Okay, the rail cover uh, is off now. It's pulled out all those staples. Um, so this is the last piece. This is the problem, is the, uh, the loose felt. So as you can see again, um, it's just, just too loose to play um, cards on not not as tight as it should be so now the the last basically the last step of um, fixing this thing no need to pull staples out of the one end it just needs to be stretched lengthwise that's where all the the waves are so got to pull all the staples out of both sides one end and then once all those staples are out I'll just stretch it this way Start putting in new staples, double check it a couple of times, and then uh, it should tighten down pretty easy. And then it'll be a matter of just putting it all back together. Alright, all the staples are out. Except for on that far end down there, I left those staples in just on the end. Um, just no need to pull them, because I can stretch it the way it needs to be stretched uh, from the other three sides. So. Um, to make this thing easy and quick, I have a an air stapler. I got a compressor, and um, I think you can buy these Bostic uh, air staplers for, I don't know, 40 bucks at Menards. But um, you don't have to use that. You could use a regular staple, stapler, but uh, this is going to go a lot quicker and a lot easier um, with that tool. So all I'm going to do is... Start in one corner, um, make sure that it's tight. I'll put a couple couple screws to anchor it there, or a couple staples. And then um, come over and kind of do the same thing in this corner, and then I'll go back and forth, make sure that it's stretched um, tight each direction. And then once I'm happy with uh, how tight it is, I'll go back through and just do a whole line of staples, just like what, what you saw get pulled out earlier and then um, that should fix the felt all right all stapled back down um, and don't know if you can tell or not but no more loose felt no more waves cards are gonna slide across there real nice um, that's the, the playing surface that 
we would have hoped to have gotten when we purchased this table but um, now as long as putting it all back together goes smooth we'll still have a decent table at the end of the thing and uh, something worth playing on so we'll show you some progress as we put it back together and if we run into any issues I'll show you that also so now the rail cover is laid back on I just used my marks that I had made um, before pulling it off originally to to get it lined back up. I think it's going to be in pretty good shape. Um, you know, won't really know until put the rail boards back on and then uh, flip this thing back over. But it should line up pretty well. So I got to go back through and finish stapling this down. But um, this is just the next step in putting it back on. So I had to kind of measure and pull out the corners and I took these measurements um, before I undid it so that I would know, you know, pretty pretty close to where all these important spots should be, the, the corners and the ends and the seams. Um, I'm calling the corners the, the curves, but uh, this should go back together. Pretty close to how it came apart okay so I have the rail back on um, and the rail cover I just where I had the opportunity where the, I had to peel back um, some of the padding I just put some of these short drywall screws coarse drywall screws through the top only did that in a couple spots but basically just um, you want to use these coarse screws with this particle board material but um, and then in the other spots I don't know if you can see them here or not but I just came through and put a screw or two in uh, from underneath just to hold that rail on because before it was nailed through the top with those little finish nails and it just didn't didn't uh, work out too well so now I've got to flip this cover back over and see how it matches up. All right, so I have put the rail cover back on, put in a million staples. As you can see, I flipped the table over to make this easier. Um, when I originally put the, the cover on, I put a few staples in the seams before I flipped it over just to hold everything in place. But um, so far, so good. Just got to... Finish putting on the uh, little material trim piece that covers up this set of staples, which isn't necessary, but I'll put it back on. And then uh, got to put on the aluminum trim piece back around the side. So I will show you when the project is all finished. Okay, the trim piece is back on underneath they use black staples when they put this in originally I didn't um, doesn't really matter I'm not gonna see it at all anyway so I gotta fix that there's a jagged stapler that's gonna hurt if somebody catches their finger on that but um, let's check this whole thing make sure there's no more but um, just about done ready to flip this thing over Check out the rail on the top and make sure that it still looks good and then uh, put on that final little aluminum trim piece and then this project is done. Alright, this thing is done. Turned out okay for uh, <clears throat> having to tear it all apart all the way down to the felt which was basically everything. Because that's the first piece that they put on when they made it. But uh, nice and smooth now. No, no loose felt. No waves in it. Um, rail went back on. You know, fairly smooth. Might be a little bit of a of a crease there, but I can live with that. This is just going to be a secondary table for um, when we're not running the main one. Or we need an additional one to the main one. So, anyways, 
a lot of work, um, but hopefully if you were in the same spot I was where you got a, got a table that you just weren't happy with, um, maybe this gives you an idea on how you can tackle it, tear it apart, put it back together. Uh, like I said, I think I paid 700 bucks on Amazon for the original one. They sent me the second top to replace it when I wasn't happy with the first one. So I ended up with two tops, both with loose felt. And then uh, now that one is on the pedestals that it came with. And this one I will just take off and on and store it when I don't need it. So anyways, if you have any questions or any comments on how to maybe do this better, um, feel free to post them. Thanks.